Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Abdul. Thank you. Social protection. How do you define social protection? Uh, social protection is a means by which governments provide support for the most vulnerable in society. In every given society, there are people who are often left out of development processes for different kinds of reasons. It could just be because of their location, their age, or just by virtue of some very unfortunate historical circumstances. So social protection interventions are meant to cater for those excluded people in, in, in society. Okay. So what kind of support is provided under this program of social protection? There are various forms of support, um, but I think the commonest is cash transfer programs by which um, government transfers cash to uh, the poorest in society uh, or periodically, uh, which is often meant to enhance their income to be able to live, have decent um, livelihoods. But there are other forms of support, for example, in some cases, free health insurance cards are provided to the poorest to enable them access health services. Support could take the form of free tuition or tuition waivers for poorer children in society. It could take the form of providing um, productive economic activities aimed at enhancing the income levels of the poorest. So why are cash transfer interventions important to reducing poverty and inequalities? Um, cash transfers are very important for the reduction of poverty and inequality. I mean, particularly when you take into account um, the situation of the extremely poor. In Ghana, um, the extremely poor are those who, when they devote their entire income to food, they still can't live on 30 cents square meals a day. So for such, for such people in society, um, there are significant budgetary constraints to access to food, to access to health, to access to education. And therefore, cash transfer programs are important in reducing the poverty levels of these kind of people and in reducing inequality in society as a whole. But are cash transfers enough to reduce poverty? And cash transfers are definitely not enough for several reasons. I mean, the most important reason is that in most developing countries, the amount of cash grant is often very little. Let me give you the example of the LEAP cash grant in Ghana. Uh, at the moment, um, a LEAP household with one eligible beneficiary member is entitled to just 64 Ghana cities every two months. 64 Ghana cities. And that translates into about this one Ghana cities a day. Um, nobody can have a decent breakfast, decent lunch, decent um, dinner with just one Ghana cities. Uh, and, in, and in any case, even if the cash grant was enough, we know that poverty means m more than lack of cash. There are other problems. I mean, that require other complementary measures uh, to be able to enable the poor get out of poverty. So what additional factors are needed to accompany cash transfers? I think it depends on the context and particularly the kind of target group that you're talking about. I mean, let's take poor pregnant women into account. If you give a one Ghana city to a poor pregnant woman for a day and probably also provide her with free health insurance card with the expectation that it will result to a reduction of maternal mortality, which is a very big problem in Ghana you may not necessarily achieve the result. Even if the cash is a lot, even if the woman is able to gain access to a free health insurance card because there are other cultural barriers. So for example, there are places where women simply just don't want to attend hospitals. So in such a situation, you may need a program like health education to accompany both the cash and the free health insurance card. I mean, otherwise, you may end up not actually um, um, alleviating the situation of, of, of this poor pregnant woman in question because her problem is actually more than just lack of cash and lack of health insurance. There are certain cultural barriers that all I mean, contribute to, to the situation in which she finds herself. So you need to have a comprehensive understanding of the various problems and design interventions that will tackle each of, 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 the, of these problems in a more comprehensive manner to be able to reduce poverty. Right, okay. So under what conditions then are these cash transfers plus, if you like, so cash plus programs likely to succeed? Well, there are several elements that are required to ensure that cash plus programs um, have the, their desired effect. And in many cases, implementation involves a lot of institutions. And one key element is that you need a formal agreement 
in the form of memorandum of understanding among these key implementing partners so that each implementing partner will have a clear understanding of what their roles and responsibilities are as far as implementation is concerned. And, and in many cases, you also need some champions. I mean, those who would, who would, who would, who would champion the processes. In other words, political commitment is extremely critical. I mean, partly because in many cases, the effective implementation of cash plus interventions also requires some additional support in terms of finance and so on. So in the absence of effective commitment on the part of those in authority, you are unlikely to succeed to be able to implement cash plus interventions um, effectively. And again, an understanding, a very clear understanding and engagement of all stakeholders is very critical, particularly with regards to what is expected of them as far as implement, I mean, the implementation of various activities of, of the program are concerned. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you very, thank much, you very much for inviting me.